Welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In our series, we take a game, we show you how to play it, and then over the following episodes, we actually play the game. And where possible, we put a seat at the table just for you. So you can help us decide on what should happen next by voting and giving us user submissions. In this way, we hope that at the end of a series, you're able to decide for yourself whether or not a game would be good for you, your family, or your gaming group. Now in this series, we're going to be covering the game Timeline. This is a game for two to eight players and takes about 15 minutes. Now, if this is your first time watching one of our series, we don't normally cover lighter short games like this, but this is a particularly busy month in the Smith household. So rather than having a few episodes and having to take a long break in the middle of a game, we're trying to do smaller, shorter games that we can do very easily. And this is one that we may be able to teach and play in just one episode. We're going to try anyway. So let's get down to the table and I'll show you how it works. So this is the contents of the game timeline. It's just a series of cards. And in the game, you're going to be dealt a certain number of these cards. And to win, you're trying to get rid of all the cards in your hand. The number of cards you start with is based on the number of players. So in this game, I've set up a two-player game, and each of us get six cards. The youngest player goes first, but before we start anything, I want to remind you that these cards are actually double-sided, and you want to make sure you keep them on this side. I'll show you why in a moment. But first, we have to create the timeline between the players. So you take the first card off the draw pile, put it in the middle of the table, and then you flip it over. When you flip it over, you're going to see that the card has the exact same picture and title, but now it also shows the date where this item was either discovered or invented. So now the first player gets to take their turn. Let's say that this player here is the first player. They have to pick one of their cards. Let's say they decide to pick the cork. Without flipping it over, they pick it up and they place it either on the left side or right side of the starting card in the timeline. If they place it here, that means they think the cork was invented or discovered before the accordion. If they place it here, they think that it was invented after the accordion. So let's say they place it here. Once they've decided for sure and they've made that clear, they then get to flip over their card and see if they're right. And sure enough, the cork was invented in 1695, which is earlier than 1829. So they've now lost a card from their hand, which is what they want, because as soon as they have no cards in their hand, they're potentially the winner. Now it's my turn. So I have to pick one of my cards, but things have gotten a little more difficult now, because now I can place my card, the milk carton, either before the cork, after the cork but before the accordion, or after the accordion. So I'm going to say that it was here, between the cork and the accordion. I would then flip it over and discover I'm wrong. It was actually in 1915. So everyone at the table would make fun of me. I would then discard this card and draw a new one and add it to my hand. So I'm no further ahead. An important thing to know is that the game takes place in rounds and a round consists of everyone taking one turn. So if a player was to get rid of all of their cards during their turn, but the round wasn't over, people still hadn't taken their turn that round, those players would get to go as well. And if they also were taking their last card and placing it into the timeline so that they were out of cards, they would get to continue. Now, if there were some people who were not able to run out of cards during that round, they would just be eliminated, and those remaining would each draw one new card from the draw pile. And they would keep playing until one player was left with no cards in their hand at the end of a round. And that's really the game. And what you can hopefully see from this little demonstration is that over time, as you're able to successfully figure out which cards go into the timeline where, it's going to become harder and harder to know where to place your remaining cards because there's going to be more specific locations that you have to slot them into. Okay, I've been joined by my competitors. Luke. And. Andrea. My kids. And we're going to start playing. Now, when we go to the table, you're going to be able to see my cards all the time and have them facing towards you guys as well as the timeline. You're not going to be able to see the kids' cards, but they'll slide them in as they take their turns. Andrew and I both talked about this beforehand, that we're both a little, a little bit... embarrassed, maybe that we don't know our inventions and times so well. It's very possible we'll put something in here, That's be wildly really wrong. wrong, and uh, be gentle. It's not as easy as it looks, all right? We don't have Wikipedia here to look up. So, uh, Okay, well listen, let's get started, and the youngest player goes first. So just to remind you the layout here, these are my cards, so you can see them nice and easy. This is the accordion, which is in the timeline, it's the first starting card, and this is our draw pile. Luke, you're going first, what are you going to pick? The glasses. Alright, and what do you think, before or after? Before. The, before the accordion. And, you're right, 1315, yes. excellent. Alright, Andrea, it's your turn. 
So I'm going to be doing the pencil, and I think it was before everything. Everything? Well, what? it wasn't before everything, and <laughs> it was after the glasses. It would have gone in here between the accordion and the glasses. So this card gets discarded, and you get the typewriter. Now, a good strategy, they say, is to pick something you don't know very well, because right now it's easier. The timeline is shorter. I'm going to guess blue jeans are coming after the accordion. Whew, I was right. It's 1873. I'm going to do the diving suit, and I think it's after the blue jeans. All right, let's see. See if I'm right. Nope. 1679. Wow, that's a lot sooner than you would think, the diving suit. Actually, these have uh, pictures on them that give you a sense, too, of how old or how young the invention might be. So this one gets discarded, and Luke, you get barbed wire. All right, Andrea, it's your turn. So I'm going to be putting the violin right in here. And will it stay there? It does. 1548. So now everyone here has lost a card. We're all pretty much tied up. It's my turn. Now I know I'm going against my earlier advice of doing the harder ones early, but I'm a little embarrassed about being wrong because I'm not confident about any of these. So I'm going to put the, the crossbow here uh, at the earliest position and it says minus 400. So I'm right. So I'm down to four cards now. I'm doing barbed wire and I think it was after the blue jeans. Think people are getting their blue jeans caught on barbed wire. And Oh, you were right. Wow. At first I thought you were oh wrong. My goodness. By one year. <laughs> so I'm going to do the typewriter and I think it's going to go right here. That's risky because that's a very small gap. So let's see if you're right. Wow, look at that. That same is awesome. Year. And this allows me to show you another little rule. These are actually the same year and that's okay. Um, what we sometimes do is just put it like this so you can see. The years, but wow, wow, the kids, whew, close ones. Okay, so now the pressure's on. I have to uh, get rid of a card here. And like I said, I don't like any of mine. Uh, I'm gonna go with the hot air balloon, and this one, this looks like a really dangerous hot air balloon. Uh, I think, I think they probably were doing hot air balloons before they had glasses and realized how crazy this idea was. Let's see if we're right. Oh no, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm way off. 1783 would have put it right there. So I'm discarding that and I am drawing the stethoscope. And before Luke takes his turn, I'm gonna zoom in a little closer so you can see the cards a little better. Of course, the problem with zooming in is as this timeline grows, I'm gonna to have to zoom out again. All right, so Luke, you go ahead and take your turn. I'm going to do the, I'm going to do role playing games. Good one. I think it was after the barb, Barbed wire? Yeah, barbed wire, that's right. Let's see if I'm right. You are right, yes. 1974. Luke is on a roll, he's down to three cards already. Andrea, you can catch up to him. What do you want to do? So I'm going to be doing the cannon, and I believe it's going to be right there. The cannon after the crossbow, that seems to make sense. But it's close to the glasses. Glasses were 1315, you got in there with 1313. I think it's probably after start shooting the cannons, they, they realized, you know, we're not seeing so good. Maybe some glasses could be useful. All right, listen, I'm going to go now again. Uh, I'm going to do the watch, and uh, this is a very old-looking watch. Do I think they had watches before glasses or after glasses? That's what I'm asking myself. I think they had watches after glasses, so I'm going to slide this over and hope that I'm right. I am. 1504. Okay, Luke. Look, we're all down to three cards. You're next. I'm going to do the tuning fork, and I think it was after the violin. Now, why do you think that? Because wouldn't they use those to play violin? You mean to help tune it? Well, we'll yeah. see. 1711. Whoa. Luke, again. Again, you right? get it right. Yes! It's interesting, because I think they make the youngest player go first, because they want to give the youngest player a little bit of an advantage. I'm worried Luke has got too much of an advantage. Okay, Andrea, it's your turn. And I'm just gonna go and do an easy one, agriculture. And I believe that's gonna go, you know, before everything else. <laughs> okay, I, I think that's a safe bet, Andrea. Let's see what it is. 
All right, yeah. minus eight thousand. So, <laughs> yep, you were you were right by a long shot. Okay, the pressure is on. I have to figure out where one of these things go: the stethoscope, submarine, or the safe. I want to get rid of this safe because I don't like it. Um, I want to say that they came up with safes later on. Uh, I'm going to go here because I've got about a hundred year gap. And I'm thinking it was around here. Let's see. 18, no, I'm wrong. 1844. So I have to pick up Morse code. All right. Luke, you get a chance to pull ahead here. I'm going to do the computer mouse, and I think it was after. Here, let me move these the over a little bit. Role playing games. All right, let's see if you're right. Oh, you're wrong. 1968, oh. it was before role playing games. So you get the smart card. Okay, the timeline's growing. I had to zoom back a little bit. Andrea, what do you want to do? I'm going to do the pull tab can. The pull tab can. I think it's going to go right there. Between barbed wire and role playing games. Is she right? 1962, you are right. Yes. <laughs> now, I hope you guys watching are playing along as well, trying to guess these before we flip them. I'd be interested in knowing which ones you guys get really wrong and you're surprised by, if there's any. All right, my turn. Um, oh, and by the way, I'm yes. down to one card. Oh, yes, Andrea is down to one card. Well, I've I got three. I've got the most cards. Um, this bucket here, uh, the submarine, uh, let's see if I can. That looks old. I mean, that looks pretty old. Yeah. I would think a submarine really would old. be a later invention, but this is obviously made out of wood. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's even before. The violin um, just because that's such a delicate piece of woodwork and this looks so rough uh, and that's not a big enough gap so I'm gonna put it here I'm gonna put it right here Wow okay so that's not right at all uh, 1775 <laughs> way over here I was giving mankind a little bit too much credit okay so I'm drawing the Lord of the Rings <laughs> okay well Luke it's your turn I'm the smart card and I think it was after role playing games. Okay, let's see what it is. What it is. Whoa, man, another close oh my one. Goodness, yes. <laughs> They're the same. I wouldn't have thought that that was that early. I would have thought yeah. it was later than that. But uh, no, apparently not. So 1974, Luke is down to one card. Yep. Uno last card. <laughs> Little gaming crossover there. Okay. <laughs> so Andrea, uh, <laughs> If you get this right, you will be out of cards and you will win. Well, I've zoomed in for what I assume is the last turn because I've just seen what Andrea has left over. Andrea, what card do you have? The colored television. Okay. <laughs> so when do you think that was invented? Probably not before agriculture. <laughs> no. I'm thinking maybe more like right here. Are you locking that in? Yes. I think it might, well, it could be there, or it might be after the pull tab. Well, let's find it. No, you were right. Yes! You were right, and you were out I of win. cards. You were, now, technically, I would still get a turn, but there's no way I can win. So, that's it. Congratulations, Andrea. Well done. Thank well you. Well done. You both smarted us all. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully you have a very good idea of how this game works now. There's a couple of different ways you can play it as well. If you want a greater challenge, you can start with more cards. One thing uh, we've done with a larger group of people is paired up and play in teams or in pairs. And uh, to give a little added challenge at the start, we sometimes put five cards up, face up right from the get-go. Uh, now, you might be wondering, you know, once you play this game a couple of times, does it become too easy because then you know all the different dates? we play this game several times and uh, we still screw, screw them up. Because every time you play, you're going to have different combinations of cards coming out. Now, maybe if you have a photographic memory, then uh, you might be better at it than, than we are. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that there are expansions for this game that are coming out that each come with the same number of cards again, I believe. So you mix them all together and then you've got even more variety. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed seeing how this works. Uh, we'll be back again in a new series with a new game real soon. Until then, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. <laughs> I didn't expect you guys to just all jump in there and say that. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done.